These young folks out here are not understanding the world. And we, as Christians, as we so call ourselves, and we've got to continue to pray. So let us go in this word and ask God for some things. O oh, gracious and heavenly master, Lord, we bow down our heads with humble hearts, bringing our burdens to you. Lord, we just don't understand that, dear Father, when we try to take on our bills, the problems of the world, and the issues, we never make it through. So, Lord, right now we ask you to take on our burdens, take on our problems, take our issues, dear Father, and fix our hearts. Lord, we ask that you will give us strength to keep praising your name. Because dear Father, we're in terrible times, and dear Father, as it grows in your word in the book, you speak, Lord, that trouble would come. And dear Father, we're in that trouble storm. And sometimes, Lord, we don't understand. But dear Father, we say thank you because we're not supposed to understand but one thing. That, Lord, we give it to you and bear our burdens. Dear Father, you said that you would take care of all our issues. Dear Father, you said that you would walk with us. Lord, all we need to do is stand with you. Dear Father, we love you. Dear Father, we know that we're losing young people. Dear Father, we're losing our members that love you. But Lord, you said you would call some of us home. And that time is when you make it. So Lord, we ask without you. Dear Father, we just ask you to just come in here and have that own way today. Dear Father, touch our hearts. And dear Father, anyone that's here that has trouble on their heart, turn it over. And we turn it over to you right now. Dear Father, we love you and we need you. Dear Father, have Because, Lord, you gave it to us. And, Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. Even when we're not good to ourselves. And, Lord, we just can't thank you enough. Dear Father, we love you. Oh, we love you. And, dear Father, we know that Psalm didn't get up this morning. But Lord, we thank you because you allowed us to come and worship your name on this day. A day not promised, but a day that was given. And we say thank you. Dear Father, dear Father, dear Father, dear Father, dear Father, dear Father, have mercy on our souls. Dear Father, we need you more than we ever needed you before. So dear Father, just wrap your loving finger of love and divine around us and let us walk beside you, dear Father, because we bow down before you. Again, again, Lord, we just can't praise you enough. You're so worthy. And we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. That we pray. Give you grace, mercy, and love that dear Father, you will carry us through. We love you. Amen. Amen.
another day's journey. We are going to prepare ourselves for our litany. We ask if we would stand the missionary church. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. They said, go to all the world, preach He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray for these alone, but for them also shall believe on me through word. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salus, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they also... Amen, amen.
for your presence once again on this day. Lord, we're so thankful that we have a God that sits high and looks low. That we know that it is you, Lord God, and not we ourselves that take us through each day that we experience. Father God, as we come, we first just want to lift up those to you who are suffering. And Lord, that's all of us, because in one way or another, we're suffering. But for those, Lord God, who are experiencing burdens that just seems unbearable, we lift them up to you. Lord God, those that have lost loved ones, those that are locked up behind prison walls, those that are laying sick in hospital beds, Lord God, we lift them all up to you. And we say, your will be done in their lives, Lord God. You even know, Lord God, that you are a healer, that you are a competent, that you can do everything, that, that with you, nothing is impossible. And that with you, Lord God, you specialize in everything. So we surrender our concerns to you. I don't know them all, Lord God, but you know each and every one of our concerns. We lift them up to you. And we say, Lord God, whatever your will is, we are asking to let it be done. And we might not always understand it, Lord God, but just give us the peace to know that you are God and God all by yourself, that you love us more than we love ourselves oftentimes, and that whatever you do, it will be for our good. So you've got us covered from head to toe. So Lord, just teach us and keep us. Give us the courage to walk in your faith and to hold on to your unchanging hands. We thank you, Lord. We ask you, Lord God, to forgive those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. We ask you to allow us, Lord God, to, to ask for forgiveness. We repent of all the things that we've done, Lord God, and we repent of turning away from you. We ask you to help us to realize, Lord God, that until we bridge that connection between you and, your, and us, we won't have any peace. And Father, we thank you for Jesus, but we know that he's the bridge over troubled water. So help us, Lord God, and those who haven't received him, touch them, that they might turn to Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to put the devil on the run, but he has no power, and we will not surrender our power to him. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for everything, yes. for all things. Yes. And for Lord God, for the words that we have not expressed verbally, we ask you to look in our hearts, look in our minds, see what we're saying, and receive our thoughts, our concerns, our wishes, our prayers. Receive them, Lord God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, and allow that power Bring back to us the peace of knowing yeah. that you have everything under control. Yeah. We might not understand it, but it's not ours to understand. Yeah. Ours is just to do and to trust. Yeah. We thank you, God. Yeah. We thank you for everything. Yeah. We thank you for all things. Again, forgive us for our shortcomings. Help us to become the person that you intended for us to be when you planted us in our mama's womb. Help us not to rely on ourselves but to know that it is in you and you alone yeah. that we live and move and have our existence. Yeah. We love you, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name, continue, Lord God, to guide us as a church family. Because this past year, maybe we've gotten off track, yeah. but we need you, Lord God, to steer us back so that we can be the light on this corner. That somebody will see and know that there is a reality yeah. in serving the true and living God. Yeah. We'll always be careful yeah. to give you the praise. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord,
this day and we want to celebrate them. Uh, I share in our ministries with you that our women of work, they're going to present first, they have a presentation they want to make, they're going to celebrate the wonderful things God is doing around the life of our church. And they back. Jacob, come on, let's give them some love. 
God, it's in moments like this, our hearts cry out and just say, thank you so much. For you have seen us through a lot. And for that, we are certainly grateful. Now, God, as we look into your word on today, inform our hearts again of intimacy that you long to share with your children. So, God, again, use imperfection, speak of perfection, that as your word goes out on today, that our lives will be made all the better. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're in a series on hearing the voice of God, and I just want to teach to you all again on this morning. On the first Sunday in May, I began this particular word, and we just got to point number one. And I want to do the second part of the whispering voice of God on today. And we may be in tune to God's voice, because if there ever was a time that we need to hear God's voice, it is right now. So stand with me as we shall read together from the Word of God, the book of Isaiah, first of all, chapter 30, verse 21. And then we're going to go over to chapter 55 and read verse number 11. Let's read together. Your ears should hear word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, wherever you turn, the right hand, whenever you turn to the left. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to kind of recap you where we were, where we left off on the uh, first Sunday. We talked about the word of God, how his voice is a whispering voice to the point that as he is whispering, he is so loud that you are able to hear him very clear. God speaks to us because the first thing that God wants to do is he wants to get our attention. I want you to understand that God wants your attention because it is in getting your attention that God can pour into you those things he wants you to have. Again, I want to remind you how God gets our attention. First of all, God gets our attention by some disruptions. Every now and then he may disrupt some stuff in our life that we may focus on him. He gets our attention by having us have restless nights where sometimes you're trying to go to sleep and no matter what you do, you just can't go to sleep. He gets our attention through voices. Sometimes God will use voices to talk to us and to give us what he is trying to get us to understand. But then sometimes God will use unusual blessings because he's trying to do something to let us know beyond the shadow of a doubt that it is definitely him that's moving in our life. And sometimes God gets our attention by saying no to us. Don't ever think that God won't say no because there's sometimes he needs to say no and you ought to thank God that he had said no. And then sometimes God will get our attention by giving us some disappointments. It is nothing like a disappointment to get us a reappointment. And sometimes God will use that thing that has caused you to get upset to get your attention. And sometimes God will put you in some extreme circumstance where God will put you in a place where you know beyond the shadow of that that you need to hear his voice. And then sometimes God will allow you to go through defeat because it is in defeat that we get ready for the next victory in our life. And then sometimes God will allow us to lose some possessions. Sometimes Sometimes God would allow you to lose some stuff because it is in your losing that you can get what God has for you. And then sometimes God would allow us to experience tragedies. None of us want to experience a tragedy, but sometimes God speaks loudest when we have to go through some unfortunate stuff in our life. Because God is always our advocate. I told us that as God gets our attention, he's always our advocate. He's always fighting on our behalf. He never lets us down. And sometimes God will alter your journey. Sometimes God will take you off the route that you have chosen because it is not the route that God wants for you. So sometimes God got to speak a word of detour in your life because when he speaks a word of detour he's trying to get you to the place he wants you to be. And this is why I want to pick up today. I want to pick up today when God has allowed us to go through that. It's all because he is trying to advance us. I want y'all to know that God got a particular word for each and every one of us and here's the thing. It is about us being able not to always have someone to pour into us. Sometimes we need to be able to hear from God ourselves. Never forget, if you grew up like I grew up, and we all basically grew up with the same kind of concept, <clears throat> if you had an older sibling, if your older sibling was a boy or a girl, you knew whatever they wore was going to eventually come down to you if you were the youngest. I have an older brother named Gerald, and I remember every time Gerald wore out, we 
when, when, when Gerald grew out of something, I would grow into it. And that's how I did it for the first years of my life. Whatever Gerald wore, I knew in a, first, in a couple of weeks, couple of months, I was going to be wearing it. But something happened as I began to, Gerald began to grow up and I began to grow out. And so now I could not wear Gerald clothes any longer. I never forget the first trip, and I don't know if y'all had them here, but we had a place called Magic Mart. And I remember the very first time we had a chance to go to Magic Mart, I was able to go to Magic Mart because guess what? I was going to get some clothes that fit me. I was going to be able to pick out some clothes for myself. I didn't have to wear hand-me-downs no longer. I was getting ready to get some clothes for myself. And I ain't just run to the rack. When I ran to the rack, my mama was in the back and mama was telling me what I could not get because of price situation. And because, you know, as a kid, you think some stuff look good when it really don't. And my mama was telling me what I could not get and what I could get. She had that voice to make sure I got something that fit me. Do y'all trying to see what I'm trying to tell y'all this morning? God is, is the same way. God is that voice is right behind you the, trying to tell you what fits you and what don't fit you. He's that voice that's trying to take you to the next level of your life. You know, it's always good for us to come to church and for y'all to be able to hear me get into the Word of God and share the Word of God with you and for you and to you. But can I tell you something? God longs to get in your ear. He wants to speak directly to you. He wants to have a conversation with you. He wants you to know exactly what it is He wants you to do. And God says, I get in your ear because here's the first thing I want to do. I want to advance you. I, I want to take you to the next place. Notice what the text says. It says that God gets in behind us and He goes to our right and to our left. Can I tell you why God does that? Because God never wants us to get stuck. And oftentimes, if we're not careful, we can get stuck. We can find ourselves getting comfortable. And when we get comfortable, we can find ourselves getting stuck. But God is saying, I'm behind you because what I don't want you to do, I don't want you to get stuck. I want to advance you because guess what God has? God has some unique stuff for us. But here's the thing. He cannot get us to it if we're not listening to his voice. I come to talk about the whispering ear of God today because sometimes in life we got so many people that's close to us and all these people that are close to us, they're talking so loud until we can't hear God's voice and God is saying, I'm trying to speak to you. I'm trying to tell you what I want you to know. I'm trying to advance you, but you got too many of the wrong people around you that, and I can't get to you because their voice is louder than mine. Understand, I'm talking about the whispering voice of God because God don't always talk loud. Sometimes God talks in a whisper that he don't show up in the hurricane he don't show up in the thunderstorm that he comes as a still small voice and he's doing it because he wants to advance us here's why he wants to advance us there is a place that God has for each one of us hear me well if you hadn't got blessed it could be that you're not in the place where God wants you to be God blesses the place and that's why he speaks to us because guess what he's trying to do he's trying to get us in in place have you ever wondered perhaps how many blessings I've missed because I was out a place I've been waiting on God to do it Yes, sir. Matter of fact, God affirmed in my spirit he was going to do it. Right. Right. But it seemed like he hadn't done it. Could it be yeah. that God told you to go to the left and you went to the right and your blessing got dropped off on the left but you missed it because you were over here on the, on the right. See, here's the thing about God. You, you ought to be so in tune with God and when God is trying to advance you that you ought to know it is him and you ought to say sometimes to God, God, do it again. Just like we watch God bless other folk every now and then you ought to tell God to do it again in my life because he is saying, because I understand that sometimes in this life we sometimes we can get to what we call a plateau. A plateau is at that place that we have become comfortable with where we are not trying to stretch ourselves to the next level because here's the thing about comfort. Comfort can get you so comfortable until you go miss out on what God has in store because you have become comfortable. Have you ever seen someone when they go through school and they learn what they think they need to learn and all of a sudden they get what they think they need and they become comfortable? Yes. Then all of a sudden 
new stuff comes along and you can't keep up because you get stuck in that place and God has said I come to try to get you unstuck and that's my word to somebody today God is trying to advance you to the place he wants you to be but you allow stuff to stick you and let me tell you what causes us to get stuck there is a word the Bible used in this particular passage talks about excavating you know what excavating is excavating is a geographical term it's a term of geology what they do is when they're trying to get into something they have to go in and dig out some stuff because what they're trying to get to is by behind a whole bunch of stuff and so if I'm going to get where I need to go I got to dig some stuff out the way I just bless somebody's life right there the very reason why God can't take you to the next level is that you got too much stuff up in your ear he's trying to excavate some stuff he's trying to pull some stuff out because until God can get rid of some of your old stuff he can't bless you with some new stuff until you get rid of some old habits and hang ups he said I cannot speak to you and take you to the next level because you got too much stuff in your ear. You ought not ever get to a point in this life where you're satisfied. If we don't learn nothing else from rich folk, learn rich folk never get satisfied. If they get 50 million, they won't fit to one. They get 51, they want 50, 52. And we ought to live life like that, but we always say, God, give me more. Don't, don't, don't let me stay stuck. Don't, don't let me plateau with this level. Help me get to the next level. And God is saying, now, I'm talking to you because I don't want you to stay stuck. And here's the thing. There are some times in life when God allows us to get in some situation. Notice what he says. He says, when you get to that place, before you go to the right or to the left, he says, I'm right there with you. Life sometimes pushes us in a place I call panic. Yeah. All of us been there. When life has become so big that we find ourselves panicking. As a matter of fact, y'all know when we first came into this epidemic, we didn't know how to handle it. Because it was something we never dealt with before. And so all of a sudden, we, we were scared. We were really scared. You all remember back in the day, I mean, about a year ago, if somebody coughed around you, you would think they threw something at you, you dodge it out the way because you don't want to catch what they just coughed out because we were at a sense of panic. As a matter of fact, we were so leery of folk. Matter of fact, it made us do what we should have been doing all along. You should have been washing your hands before we even came to the pandemic. It's some stuff we should have been doing based on GP, but guess what? All of a sudden now, you matter of fact, if you go to a restroom right now and somebody walk out the door now and they don't wash their hands, it sends you in a state of shock because you have to go and touch that door. And guess what? You don't want to touch that door because you're afraid of what they left behind the door. But guess what he said? When you got me on your side, you don't have to panic. And that's why you ought to praise God today. If you still here today, it's because God done kept your mind. And God said, I don't care what goes on around you. As long as you get me with you now. I'll give you peace that surpasses understanding. That. And somebody ought to thank God right now that you ain't got everything right. That. But you got some peace in the midst of this storm. That. And that's what God does. In the midst of our trials, that. he speaks to us. And that's why I thank God that we have an certainty with God. No matter what we face, we don't have to panic because he's right there by our side. But can I tell you what else God does when he's speaking to us? He's assuring us. You know, life can paint a picture, and if you're not too careful, you can believe the hype before you believe Christ. You can buy into what seems impossible when God had already told you, if you got me, everything is possible. Why y'all think the writer sat down and wrote this song? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Y'all just miss your shout, can I say it again? Oh, what a foretaste. Okay, y'all still got yeah, y'all know what a foretaste is? Let, let me help you. My my mama uh, can cook like no other mother can. I mean my, my mama can show enough cook. And one of my mama's favorite dishes is the pound cake. And when my mama get that pound cake together, oh it's a work of art. 
and she's mixing that stuff together I mean it's like poetry in motion but you know what mama would do before mama would put the cake in the oven she'd take the last spatula and get her put a lid on that spatula and she gives him here you go baby and I take that spread and I, I, I lick. <laughs> That's a fortune. It ain't the cake yet, but it let me know what's getting ready to come. You just miss your shot. Every now and then you ought to thank God that there is something greater coming because right now it's just a foretaste of what is to come. Now, I'm about to get in my Pentecostal thing. Is there anybody in the house right now that you want God to do some great stuff in your life? Now, I tell you to start praising God like you already get it. Because God, I'm giving you a foretaste. If you're still here today, it's a foretaste of what is to come. And he said, I assure you. You know, can I tell you sometimes God, God got to convince us that he got us. I mean, God told him in the desert, he said, uh, water, go flow in the desert in 2 Kings chapter 3. And we already know water is not usually in the desert. But if the Lord says he's going to put water in the desert, get your cup out. Okay, 2 Kings chapter 4, there are three, four lepers at the gate. And they say, if we go to the city, we die. If we stay here, we die. But the Lord had already told the prophet that tomorrow, it's going to be some flour available. Now, y'all got to see this. Because they were in the famine, the only thing they could finally eat at this time was donkey dung and donkey heads. And all of a sudden, God tells them that you ain't got to worry about having no donkey tomorrow because tomorrow, that is going to be some fresh bread. And get on tomorrow, that they got some fresh bread. Yeah, y'all still ain't catching it. There. God goes to a 90 year old woman and says to this 90 year old woman through her 100 year old husband that, that y'all go have a baby. And the woman, she said that. You don't know so much. How am I going to have a baby at night? I'm well beyond my reproductive years. But guess what? Now, Abraham took Sarah. And the next thing we know, that after they had a night of rock and roll, the next thing she knew, that she was pregnant and gave birth to a baby. That Y'all still ain't caught it. You remember Gideon. That Gideon got 300 men. But Gideon, 300 men. That is getting ready to face 135,000 men. Did y'all catch that? that? 300 men is getting ready to face 135,000. 35,000 men, can I tell you, the odds were 450 to 1, but, but at the end of the day, whenever you get God, I don't care how many folk are against you, that if God is for you, that he can help you win. Somebody ought to thank God today, that because some folk counted you out a long time ago, that they said that you ain't come from nothing, that they talk about who your mom and your daddy were, that they said because they was nobody, you ain't going to be nobody, that. but look at you today, God done changed that situation, that because what But can I tell you, God is consistent. Can, can I tell y'all that again? He is consistent. What, 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 watch what he says. 55, 11, he says, when I send my word out, it will not come back void. God is saying, I've been good. I am good. And I'm going to keep doing what I've already done. We say it like this. He is a God that cannot lie. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Do y'all know I keep telling y'all a lot of times, if your story don't shout you, it ain't much to you. Because all you got to do is take a trip down memory lane. And you can say, God's been consistent. Can I tell you how consistent he's been there? Every time you get home, guess what? He put food on your table. Okay? Can I tell you, God is so consistent. Matter of fact, I, can, can I tell you how good God is? I was ripping the running so yesterday, and we had the last meeting around what, 2 or 3 o'clock or something. It got late. And I had been running all day long and really didn't get a chance to eat. And I was hungry at the last meeting. 
only to find out when I got upstairs, Brenda Joyce had some hamburger and french fries. See, that ain't shouting y'all, but see, God says whenever you're hungry, I put food on your table. He's consistent yeah, every now and then. See, here's the thing. See, sometimes y'all got to have big stuff to shout, shout. Now, if you can't shout off hamburgers and french fries, now, you ought to shout off the bacon and eggs you ate this morning. Now, he's been consistent. Now, you ought to shout that you still got clothes on your back. Now, he's been, I wish you had somebody here. Now, but see, when I look back over my life, now, I got to reason to praise God because he's been consistent. Now, he was good to me. Yesterday, man. he's good to me today. Man. Man, like he just keep on blessing me. Man. Any blessed folk in the house, man. anybody in favor to say that you looking at somebody man. has God been consistent with me. When I was hungry, he fed me. When I was not down, he picked me up. When I was sad, he made me smile. When I was broke, he put money in my pocket. He was sick, he healed my body. God is consistent. You know, oh my God. You know, sometimes you can live so fast till you miss the blessing of nature. I was over my friend Sean House last week and some birds built a nest right in the corner of his porch. It was feeding time. And then them birds got to chirping. M my mom and dad are not in the, in the nest, but those little birds got to chirping. But about five minutes later, I seen a mama and a daddy bird come with worms hanging out the mouth. And little birds quit chirping. And they start eating. Now, y'all, I don't know if y'all caught what I just said. That these birds didn't see a worm, but they had enough sense to know that, that somebody was going to bring something to their nest. And they was choking because they knew that they was going to be taken care of. Now, all I'm trying to tell somebody is today that if you need God to bless you, I dare you to start choking right now. Because it is a closed mouth that don't get fed. Is there anybody here need God to bless you? I dare you right now say, Lord, I need you to bless me. Bless the top of my head down to the sole of my feet. Lord, bless me. But can I tell you something else about God? God is a conversationist. Y'all got to hear me here. Can I tell you the very reason why God is not talking to some of y'all is because you're not listening. And you're not talking to him. How do you expect God to talk to you when you don't talk to him? I, I want to qualify this. Because a lot of people, the only time you pray is when panic comes. God gets sick of your panic voice. Can I say it again? Lord, I'm about to get put out. Help me. And then the Lord help you. And you don't hear no more. You don't talk to the Lord and say, Lord, my life's about to get turned out. God wants you every now and then just to have a conversation with him. Matter of fact, when was the last time you said to God, Lord, I just said, just want to just say good morning to you. I don't want to ask you for anything because you consistent. I already know if you took care of me yesterday, then you're going to take care of me today. So today, I just want to say good morning to you, Lord. And matter of fact, every night that you ought to say, Lord, you know what? I just thank you for what you're already done. I ain't going to ask for another thing then, because I ain't thank you enough for what you already got. Do I wish you had somebody who can bless God then, for what you already got? You ain't got to get another thing. Then. Can anybody bless God for the car you're driving right now? Then, for the place you're living right now? Then, for the clothes you got right now? Then. I dare you give God some praise for what he's already done. Then. But when you look back over your life, then, God has been good. Is there anybody thank God? Then? If he don't do another thing for me, then, he's already done enough.
know. Okay, can I, I, I'm, I'm just talking to you this morning. Can I just talk to you? Everybody need to have what is called a tent of meetings. Here it is. When Moses brought the children of Israel out and um, they got to acting the fool, and Moses set up a tent of meetings. It was a place where he went that him and God can have a conversation. Can I bless y'all? Everybody needs to have a tent of meeting. You, you, you need to have a designed place where you can go and talk to God. It may be your bathroom, maybe your bedroom, your living room, maybe be your car. But you ought to have a designated place that you can talk to God and God can talk back to you. God wants to have a, a conversation with you. Yeah. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the oh help me preach somebody voice I hear calling oh did y'all catch that if you come to the God he'll talk to you if you show up he'll talk to you to have the joy we share can, can I ask y'all a question have you ever get happy while you were praying? If you ain't never get happy while you praying, you ain't been praying. <laughs> because sometimes when you start talking to God and God start talking back to you, you can't help but start praising God. See, that's why I tell people a lot of folk, y'all, a lot of folk are constipated praisers because they think the only place that you can praise God is when you come up in the church house. Anywhere God bless you, that don't want to be the place you start praising God. Never has anybody ever praised God the grocery store because the catfish was on sale. You never praise God at the parking lot because you weren't supposed to get that car. You get God working out there. You never praise God at the mortgage place. You don't go to your first house. So when God bless you, that's where you ought to praise the Lord. Is there anybody who ain't got a reason to praise the Lord? Anyway, you bless me. I'll be satisfied. But let me close this this morning. Because when you're having a conversation with God, Satan tries to mimic the voice of God. That, that, that's why, that's why well, next week I'm gonna teach on, I think it's John 10. He said, my sheep, they hear my voice. And another voice, they can't even. Whew. I'm about to shout myself because I know what I'm going to talk about next week. And when I was looking over it this week, it made me excited to know how God understands the tenor and tonation of your voice. It may be a whole bunch of folk around, but when you start crying out to God, God knows your. Okay. I, I, can, can I drop this on y'all? Uh, have you ever realized? If you ever play sports, do you not know, I don't care how many folk may be in the stand shouting, but when your mama and daddy start shouting, I don't care Ray Ray, Day Day, KK, Shay Shay, Baby Daddy over there, I hear my mama voice. And God will say, because I made a covenant with you. Listen to this. You know why God talks to us? That's part of his covenant. God is not in a contractual relationship with us. He's in a covenant. You can break a contract. You can walk away from a contract. You can tell a contractor. But God says, I don't want y'all to be contractual kids. I want y'all to be covenant kids. That's why every morning you wake up, I don't care how bad things are, 
You ought to wake up and say, this is the day. The Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day you wake you up, you ought to start praising his name. Can, can I tell y'all something? Can I tell on myself and I'm, I'm through? Jerry would tell y'all that I, I walk the neighborhood basically every, every day. I'm, I'm, I'm working on my fine, y'all, so I got to walk the neighborhood every day. But I was listening to some music as I was walking, and for every reason, something's got a hold of me. And one of the folk that see me walking walked out the house and said, Doc, you all right? I said, yeah, I'm all right. They said, we see you shaking and moving. We thought something was wrong. I said, man, you just don't know. I'm listening to a song and the song is that he's been better to me than I've been to myself. When I start thinking about how good God's been to me, I start shaking and praising his name. I'm through though, but is there anybody here? When you think about how good God has been, it's a covenant relationship. He keeps on doing great things. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus, it all it's done for me, but my soul is the whispering voice of God. You know, God wants to, and I'm through, pierce your ear. Can I give y'all a quick history lesson to let y'all know that Africa was not the first place that ear piercing actually started. God, well, what happened was, if you were a servant, and we know that after seven years of your jubilee, you would be released. And if you love your master that much, you could stick with that master for the rest of your life and be in a covenant relationship with him. How they showed the covenant relationship was simply this. They would take what we call, what they call an eye, we would call it a hammer. They would take a spike and they'd take you to a doorpost. And they would literally pierce your ear. And the earring that was in your ear said that you belong to this person because of a covenant agreement. Can I ask y'all a question? Who has pierced your ear? Listen, God is calling right now for someone who does not have a relationship. He wants to pierce you. He wants you to be committed to him. So if you don't have him as your Savior, can I offer him to you right now that you can connect with Christ? Second of all, if you're here upon the sound of my voice and you don't have a church home, God says to you, I want you to have a covenant relationship with me and build upon our relationship together by being in a local body. I would love to be your pick of pastor, friendship would love to be your church of choice. Third, if you're in the house and you need to be restored because some stuff got in your ear, and God is, I want to excavate it that you may become right with me again. As we stand to our feet, my brother, my sister, it's your chance right now. It's your chance.
believe in God as you're speaking to us right now, a time for us to return to you what you have so graciously given unto us. God, we ask now in the name of Jesus that you receive what we give for the work of ministry, that you bless us according to the wonderful things that you have done for us. God, we thank you again for being in a covenant relationship with you. And God, we're committed to you all the way, not just with our lip service, but with our hip service and even with our, okay, with our, with our resources. Bless now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we ask for each ministry to represent with $200 if you can. Oh, come close to it as you can. One hundred and ninety-nine and ninety-nine cent. Amen. Go next to this side. We'll stand for the direction of the ushers. season saints we're on the conference call line at 11 o'clock on wednesdays and then we're back in the sanctuary if you want to come with us on wednesday evening we're back in the sanctuary you can come and uh, be with us in bible study on wednesdays we're looking forward to the 26th we're going to have a seminar uh, that's going to be designed to help us deal with what we are dealing with amen there's a lot of stuff that has happened over the last 14 to 15 months and we want to make sure that we're giving you necessary tools to make sure that whatever that you have faced that you can handle that situation because again uh, there's still a lot that we're dealing with that we need to have some things to help us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God remains consistent you know I, it's one thing for me to tell y'all how consistent God is but we need to hear some other ways we're going to be able to see the consistency of God so again I want you to put your calendars down we're going to be streaming that also on the 26th it's going to be a wonderful time for us to be able to share together I want to continue to pray for Sister Marie Thomas we're glad to see her in the house today. We want her to know that we're praying with you, praying for you. Anything that your church family can do, you know that we're here for you to lift you up and to support you as you're walking through this your time. We want to also lift up Brother Floyd. Brother Floyd's 
mother is at the point of being able to see the Lord. So I'm going to lift up Brother Floyd. I also want to lift up Brother Doug Lanier. Uh, he has a sister that's, that's um, um, they, um, in hospice. And so we want to lift the families up again. There's a lot going on, but thanks be unto God that God knows how to handle what every trial and tribulation we're facing because that's how good God is. He's just a consistent God. He's consistently good. We want to pray for the family of Sister Lita Breed, their loved one who was killed in a car accident on yesterday. We want to lift that family up in prayer and know and be under shadow of a doubt that God has you all in his hands. And that's one thing I love about God. His hands are big enough to handle us. Amen. Amen. Any birthdays been celebrated today, uh, the 16th until the 22nd of May? All right, all right. Let's sing our birthday song. This Saturday at 10 o'clock, if you bring your weed eaters, we have some weeds around the church. The you know, one thing that we can't do is we can't let our grounds go down. So every man that came next Saturday at 10 o'clock, if you bring your weed eaters so we can get the weeds from around our church, it'll be very much appreciative. Again, we ask for our men to show up and help us do this on next Saturday, uh, starting at 10 o'clock. Amen. Let's stand together as we better go down from this place. Now, any visitors in the house? Any visitors? Come on, let's welcome our visitors. Listen to us online. Come on, let's bless them.